Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture on community theatre. This lecture is part of your paper on community, media and society. Theatre has been, since its origin, a widely used way of critical expression. Community theatre is about use of plays as a medium for spreading important socially relevant messages. People make scripts produce, direct and act. It is aimed at people and customized to be relevant and easy to understand. The people involved in community theatre usually want to spread awareness and highlight social issues and problems faced by the community, sometimes even within the community. The plays are usually a mirror of the social happenings and are helpful in understanding the dissent of people. Many who started these initiatives never got an iota of recognition. In words of author Eugene Van Ewen, community theatre is moving, pertinent, powerful and effective in strengthening the groups of people it caters to. Yet. Because it mostly manifests itself in out of the way places, this art form is often ignored by inner city elites, by policy makers and by cultural commentators. These dedicated artists who are unsung heroes. In this lecture, we will study different community theatre initiatives across the world and in India. These groups have created impact not only in theatre studies but also in communities and societies. It is important to know the culture and methodology of work of the community itself which provides insights into their society and culture. That helps us to know the brief history of community theatre art scene and background of the featured artist and the organizations can also be known by studying community theatre. Now let us look at community theatre across the world. The Theatre of the Oppressed by Augusta Ball is a non-traditional theatre style used to prompt dialogue and promote community-centered problem solving. Ball started it in Brazil and it then went to Argentina, Peru, Ecuador and France while in exile from military dictatorship. It was a participatory theatre promoting awareness, fostering democratic and cooperative forms of interaction. Participants showcase what their priority issues are and develop short scenes based on it. Role playing is instrumental for analyzing power and stimulating debate while trying to find solutions. It is used by organizers and educators worldwide for democratizing their organizations, analyzing problems and preparing for action. Community theater in the Philippines had political undertones that protested against the Marcos rule. Philippines Educational Theatre Organization, that is PETA, School for People's Theatre, found it difficult to change mentality of school teachers who gave no importance to creativity. Schools in remote areas had no infrastructure in the form of adequate number of teachers. PETA conceived the Creative Pedagogy program to develop teachers into creative individuals who passed on creativity to their students. They formed the Metro Teen Theatre League, a network 
of youth theatre groups based in different high schools around Manila. Community plays were implemented through basic integrated theatre art workshops in educational institutes, churches and small organizations. It played an instrumental role in mobilizing the people against Marcos regime. Many veteran artists left PETA as they found it difficult to raise money for payments. Theater in Los Angeles was influenced by film and television industry, especially Hollywood. Los Angeles boasted of good infrastructure for theater. It housed many community theater groups like Cornerstone, Latino Theatre Company, Bilingual Foundation of Arts, Latin Theatre Initiative, the Hispanic Playwrights Project. Cornerstone worked at the grassroots. Sally Gordon founded the Firebird Theatre Company. Her plays were directed at children and were innovative with adaptions of myths, folk tales, classical and original plays. The highlight of her plays was use of live music, dance and participation from audience. Performances took place at schools, museums, libraries, festivals, theatres, prisons, old age homes and for physically and mentally handicapped adults. Gordon conducted workshops with limited number of participants to identify potential theatre artists. She tried to infuse continuity in community theatre endeavours. There is no written history of Costa Rican theatre. It relies upon the oral ones. Alfredo Catania, former director of Costa Rica's National Theatre Company, was instrumental in bringing all theatre groups of Costa Rica under one umbrella, that is Argentinian Federation of Independent Theatres. Themes for the plays emerged from doctors, lawyers, farm workers and students. He set up the first official theatre school which the government brought under the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sport. The Cuban Revolution helped grassroots theatre workshops. There were two separate ensembles within National Theatre Company, one composed of young actors called Shayotera and the other was a repertory company performing in National Theatre, conducting workshops in big factories. At the end of each year, both the repertory and Chayotera collaborated for a joint production at the National Theatre. The Toller Nacional de Teatro was formed as an extension of National Theatre Workshop. The TNT insisted more on process rather than high production quality. Santiago Gracia founded La Candelaria Theatre Company in Bogota and helped spread community theatre in places like Peru, Venezuela, Brazil, Ecuador and Mexico. Colombian plays are known for meticulous structural analysis. Danilo Montoya founded Agua Marina whose maiden show was based on politicians who never delivered their promises. While politicians in power felt threatened, the opposition wanted to use them for selfish benefits. Montoya conducted plays depicting people from all walks of life as passing the buck and not taking responsibility. This did not go down well with many viewers. Their plays explored deplorable conditions of prisons and prisoners, especially mentally challenged ones. Punta Arenas of National Theatre Company accused them of adhering to the elite society 
and not highlighting problems of lower classes. Kenyan theatre was influenced by British culture as it was under their rule for nearly a century. Kenya was projected as a failed state with corruption and violence by Western media. This led to simmering discontent among people projected in the street plays. British expatriates dominated the theatre scenes, which occasionally had the original Kiswahili play. In a cultural turnaround in the 80s, playwright director John Ruganda from Uganda and Jody Graft from Ghana inspired formation of student theatre. Nkaga, a Kenyan writer, prioritized Kenyan, East African, African and Third World literatures over Western literatures, which resulted in establishment of African Studies Department and an Afrocentric Literature Department. In 1974, the Free Travelling Theatre was founded, which fought for freedom of expression as community plays were censored by the government. Nugaga wrote in Gikyu, so his plays were translated in other African languages. Implementing plays in more languages brought crowds from all over. Participants including rich, middle class, poor, landless farmers and seasonal labourers. The play Meet Nyojgwara depicted the heroic struggle of Kenyan workers against the British. It was banned by not allowing actors to rehearse and destroying the stage. Nagaga went into a self-imposed exile after strong protest from police. This act of government proved the power of community theatres. FTT aroused the suspicion of the authorities and many artists left the country. FTT was replaced by People's Art a group from the University of Nairobi. Participation increased and plays touched upon issues like road safety and sexually transmitted disease. FTT was revived in 1984. Richard Forthingham and David Watt, two of Australia's leading scholars of community theatre, researched the change happened in government arts funding leading to prolific community theatre movements of 1980s in Australia resulting in formation of death-defying theatre. Australia was going through its worst economic crisis and the rights of Aborigines were being withdrawn in 1997. The DDT started staging plays against this background by employing immigrants from western parts of Australia who came in search of a living anticipating an industrial revolution. DDT began offering free community theatre workshops financed by local councils or housing departments in 1983. They taught children circus skills by going to under-resourced housing states. DDT's plays were visual treats with music in background. Their flagship play was Cold Town, promoted by the Australian Council. In 1990, Fiona Winning was appointed artistic coordinator with the main responsibility to reorganize funding for DDT. In five years, she made DDT a financially sound and rich theatre group by convincing Australians Council Theatre and New South Wales Ministry of Arts. Her play Blood Orange dealt with feminine issues of body, health and sexuality through storytelling and song. It was taken to schools with the help of health department highlighting issues of eating disorders and HIV AIDS. Theatre in Belgium was either classical or contemporary. Audience was only 2 to 3 percent of the population, consisting of high and middle classes. Peasants, 
from the non-audience. University groups and several companies decided to perform for that non-audience which evolved into action theatre. There is considerable debate over whether action theatre is a form. It is proposed that it takes all forms. It's a theatre made by people themselves to narrate their stories. 30 important themes have been dealt with in the past decade including oppression of women, cultural identity, racism and xenophobia and many other themes like these have been explored. From evolution perspective, action theatre has been found to a union of popular cultures and socio-cultural action. Stage is an integral and definitive part of action theatre. It is a reproduction of the way group looks at society. On stage, everything is relevant because it is an inception of power and its reproduction. Every time a person performs, they choose for whom they perform and for what. The group is the eminent character. No performer should perform for personal profit or the glory. Each performer wants the audience to profit by the play. Action theatre thrives on expression and emotion. Free expression is necessary but not sufficient. Emotion is important but when it relates to the stakes. Now let us look at community theatre across India. Jan Sanskriti started its work in a small village in the Sundarbans in 1985. Drawing inspiration from Augusta Ball, it evolved as the first space in India to channel the theatre of the oppressed. Focusing on the individual in society, it is an exponent of forum theatre in which members of the theatre team select, construct and narrate a social problem from their daily life. This problem is then posed to the audience who are active participants in a dialogic exchange that breaks cultural silence and taboo. Theatre extends beyond a performance to become a conversation about the ailments of society. At present, Jan Sanskriti has up to 30 satellite teams that range across India, from West Bengal to Gujarat and all the way down to Karnataka. Their performances attract up to 2 lakh spectators every year. They address multifaceted and pertinent issues such as domestic violence, child marriage, human trafficking, illicit liquor, etc. The forms they stage are adaptive and localized, emphasizing on the actor as an activist that can foster a revolutionary energy amongst the people. Chan Sanskriti organizes a bi-annual theatre festival called Muktadhara, which brings together a large number of people from all over the world, participants, practitioners and academics. They have large number of all women teams that personally spearhead gender issues. Apart from workshops, they explore means to connect with communities through cycle rallies, padhyatras, flood relief assistance and learning centers for young children. Their artistic intervention is inherently political and revolves around spectator who takes the reins to guide society from the real to the ideal. The self-innovating cultures of 15 peasant women and two male animators belonging to the rural cultural action groups led to formation of Garib Dongari Sangathan of the Village Community Development Association in Pune district in June 1991. This group 
functioned as a study group that conducts extensive research, obtains oral narratives and discusses lives and problems of deserted peasant women. The participants being all social animators who help deserted women in their home, personal lives and in the court of law. The group resorted to the effective medium of street theatre to create a deeper visual impact on the minds of spectators regarding grave concerns of deserted women. By engaging with this group and its plays, they believed that the masses would formulate a critical public opinion regarding these issues and gradually translate their opinions into constructive actions by taking charge of their lives to get rid of the oppressive socio-political circumstances. Street theatre performance is received with great deal of applause and criticality when it is performed at villages and town squares of rural hinterlands of Maharashtra in dialects and socio-political cultural setting of its own. Both audience as well as the actors belong majority to peasant class and castes of Maharashtra and strike a sentimental relationship with the detailed performances of mill grinding songs which acts as a strong metaphor of the laborious lives of rural peasant women. The circular dance formations suggest multiple ways in which women share their joys and sorrows with each other on festivals, occasions and rituals in their daily lives. Social issues of women staged created a powerful impact on the minds of the audience and they react to it strongly during and after performance. Women spectators in rural areas have walked up to the actresses and applauded the peasant actresses for their bold choice to perform in front of such a large audience and have shared their personal experiences of desertion, gender justice and oppression. The urban middle class audiences of Pune and Delhi have grappled with the new language of performance and gender issues. Hindu religion provides the root of the folk theatre form Therikuttu performed by well-known itinerant performers in the villages and temples of northern Tamil Nadu. It is part of ritual enactment of Draupadi's myths during Chitrai, the first month of Tamil calendar. While musicians and a chorus of singers sit at rear of the square playing area, the actors sit in front amidst the open spaces of performance. This dance drama is considered with performing parts of Mahabharata and has been appropriated by those with modern secular concerns as wanting to get health and other information to rural villages. It is believed that actors are actively transformed into the deities involved once the ceremony of Thambulam is offered. One of the stock roles in it is of Katyakaran, who is both clown and narrator. He introduces the characters, adds narration but it, it isn't clear through performance and passes comments to audience about the other characters behind their backs. The storytelling sessions and cycle of plays complement each other. In the presentation of the Mahabharata in its entirety, it is observed that when the actor or the audience member goes into trance during the performance, the performance is immediately stopped and the actors playing Duryodhana and Dusashna pray to Goddess Draupadi asking for her forgiveness. This occurrence authenticates the efficacy of people living by these myths, norms 
and values. It is considered important for preservation of progeny and fertility in women, land and nature in general. Since its birth in 1973, the Delhi-based theatre group Jan Natya Manch or Janam has a role as the residual heat of India's undaunted history of social movements and people's theatre. They have explored left politics and leftist theatre regimes. The bestowment of the idea of collectiveness of making the art form available to all those who fall as victims to the identity of the marginalized. They have probed the hollowness of green rooms that must have echoed of determined projections of righteousness dissecting the need to break individualist identity in leftism. The history of their plays is an intricate, immersive, painstakingly passionate narrative wonder. One is bound to find themselves intrigued by their play Azadi Ne Jab Dastagdi, which takes the mind back to the much celebrated Halla Bol. The singular question posed in and around the bone marrow of India's integrity, who all and ever killed Sardar Hashmi. A tragedy for Janam was answering of the question with few convenient inquiries. How privileged is martyrdom? If it is about a collective, why must an individualist following find place in leftist ideology? The plays like Mat Bato in Sanko, Andhera Afta Mangega, Wo Bol Uthi, plugged into hearts of workers and revolutionaries the luxury of entertainment. It also became a bugle which rescued them from the psyche of victimhood. Janam is a landmark in performance arts for the country to understand how left is the left critique, justifies as she he is. Sabdar Hashmi Zinda Hai is a call that lends power for human chains across the world. Now let us try and summarize what we discussed in the lecture. Augusto Ball drew inspiration from Ferreri Brecht and Stanislavski and established the theatre of the oppressed in the early 90s. It promoted theatre as a language accessible to all and was meant for people who wanted to fight against oppression in their daily lives. Jan Sanskriti in India is interested in transformation that can occur through theatre despite the ideological principles governing its functions. By opening avenues for self-expression, audiences are encouraged to look at their reality in a critical manner to try to understand and analyze it. Themes of female suicide due to harassment by in-laws demand for dowry and polygamy have been raised through street theatre in Maharashtra. Economists and activists Hema Riker believed that street theatre has an inherent quality of bringing about collective, constructive and transformative changes within personal lives and socio-political cultural frontiers of communities. The free traveling theatre in Kenya had female protagonists in plays opposing to exclusive male right to land inheritance, polygamy, dowry, female education and domestic violence. In Therukutu, Katyankaran is the channel between the epic world of Mahabharata and the real world. It stages the violation of a value which produces the strongest range of emotions. This system of values is intimately linked with the principles of natural justice. This leads us to question how powerful performances of ephemeral arts 
like community theater are. PETA in the Philippines is a multifunctional theater organization with women's, children, and youth theater units. Sally Gordon's Theater Group in Los Angeles specialized in organizing and conducting camps for juvenile criminals and her plays were directed towards children. In Costa Rica, Agua Marina's plays were aimed at local fisher fox, aid victims, local legends and prisoners. In Australia, government played a role in funding community theatre and plays showcasing health issues which were promoted in schools for awareness. Janam's conviction and need for a self-conscious disclaimer explains the difference between a campaign and passionate performance appeal. It ensures that the curtains don't come down on the legacy of the marriage of protest and art. Action theatre in Belgium was characterized by people, their stakes, symbols, link between forms and content. A contemporary understanding now includes venue, audience and long-term impact as characteristics. It is crucial to answer the five questions of who, why, how, where and for whom through the performance. The context is changing and so is the ideation in deriving answers. It is difficult to set a pattern or draw up a formula for community theatre. In the post colonial era, communities plays were banned as they were anti-establishment. One has not been able to find out why a particular play has been popular. Funding for community theatres has been totally dependent on whims and fancies of the government in power. There does exist a global movement of resistance through community theatre. I hope you enjoyed the lecture. For more details, please read the module carefully and attempt the questions at the end. Thank you.